Revealing the Hospice Gap. Hi, everyone. Last week, we talked about how most people aren't confident in their end-of-life caregiving abilities, even though it's certain that we will all need this someday. I also taught you the importance of understanding what quality of life subjectively means to you, understanding that regrets are really the number one fear of the dying, and choosing where you want to be cared for at the end of life and what would you need to do and to learn to have that be possible. Hi everyone, I wanna thank you so much again for all of the comments and the messages and I am reading and responding to each and every one of them. They have been so heartfelt and so important. So I want them to keep coming and I wanna thank you for them. My name is Suzanne O'Brien. I am a former hospice and oncology nurse and have had the honor and privilege of working with over 1,000 patients at the end of life. This is my life's purpose and today I'm going to teach you about the hospice gap and why it's absolutely critical to know how to provide quality end-of-life care as a family caregiver. Many of us like to think that we can rely solely on the healthcare system or hospice to take care of end-of-life journey for us when a loved one is nearing death. This is a common misunderstanding. The truth is that hospice is not 24-hour bedside care. Although a beautiful model, in theory, the present medical model of hospice is just not working well to fully support end-of-life patients and their families. According to a recent study by Medicare, a hospice worker is only in the home of a dying patient for an average of 30 minutes a day. 30 minutes equates to 2% of each day. This means that 98% of the hands-on care falls on the immediate family of the patient during the end of life. Now, to be clear, most hospice, hospice workers are doing the best they can with the conditions that they must contend with. And I know because I used to be one of them running all over the county trying to make a difference. Dedicated hospice workers are often hampered by systemic issues such as lack of resources or staffing shortages, which then translates into a lack of care for patients and families. There was an elderly man who contacted the doula giver's office one day, and he called us up and he said that he had been taking care of his dying wife, who was 82 years old, all by himself. And he said that the hospice nurse said that they would be with him when his wife died. And when she was dying, he said that he called them, but no one ever came. And this man is now suffering from complicated grief and trauma, and he is trying to understand why this happened. And I'll tell you, people don't understand. There's usually one nurse that's on call, and she or he may have five patients to see. It's just there is problems and gaps in the system. When I talk about the hospice gap, I'm referring to the deficiencies that exist in mainstream end-of-life care. This deficiency is causing people harm at the most vulnerable time in their lives. And we only have one opportunity to have end-of-life go well. When it doesn't, we remember that forever. There are three main gaps in the present hospice care model. Gap number one is the gap in time. There is a gap between the time required at the bedside by patients and families and what can be fulfilled by the overextended hospice workers. It's just not there. The time is not there, and that's the best medicine we have to give is time. Gap number two is the gap in education. There's a gap in family caregiver education, and this is the core of the hospice model. Hospice is supposed to teach the family how to do the care. If we're not there and we can't teach them, how do they know? And gap number three is the gap in good deaths. There is a major gap between the type of end-of-life experience most people want for themselves and those they love and what is actually being provided by the current system we have. Truly understanding the problem is what allowed me to discover the answer. We need to get more knowledge, 
skills and resources directly into the hands of family caregivers that provide the backbone of end of life care in this country and around the world. It's the caregiver. So let's do more for that family caregiver if they're gonna be doing most of the care, 98% of it. This is the most immediate need right at this very moment. And most people mistakenly will think that once they make the decision to put a loved one on hospice care, that hospice will be there and take care of everything and that it's just not a reality. That is not how hospice works. And I'll tell you something, to learn that is not when you put somebody on hospice, it's devastating. So you don't wanna find that reality out when your loved one is actually dying. Next week, I'm gonna show you how you can gain the confidence to navigate the end of life journey with grace and with strength. So leave me a comment or send me a message letting me know again what you thought of this video today, what you learned, what questions you have, and I'm gonna do my very best to answer each and every one of them. We are in this together and together we can make a difference. So leave me a comment and I will see you in the next video.